Well, the detailed title of my talk is really Neutrino Mixing and Baryogenesis via Leptogenesis from Complex Scaling. This work has been done in collaboration with Rome Sawanto and Ambar Koshal, and these are the two papers. If I will not read out the abstract, I'll just go to the contents right away. So I'll first introduce the subject, then I'll open the neutrino fact file and talk about data in the three sigma ranges. I'll then mention what the problem is with simple real scaling, which was proposed by Lavura and Mahapatra and Rolly Johan. And then I'll bring out an aspect of this, which is a residual level symmetry, and talk about Z2 scaling. And then I'll explain how from residual flavor symmetry you can go to complex scale. It solves all the problems that you have with simple. And then I'll talk about biogenesis, dialectogenesis, and end with some technological discussion and talk about the conclusion. My focus here today is going to be on neutrino mixing and not so much on the dynamical generation of neutrino masses, which for which I'll assume the type 1 seesaw mechanism. We have the flavor eigenstates and the mass eigenstates related by the unitary matrix U. We take the charged leptons to be diagonal so that the U is nothing but the uh, Monte Carlo, Maki, Nakagawa, Sakata matrix. And of course, we have, since mu is a complex symmetric matrix here. Now, if you start at the Lagrangian level, we have the Higgs doublet and the right handed neutrinos. We assume three uh, right handed neutrinos which are Majorana, and then, of course, you generate a neutrino mass matrix through the type 1 C form mechanism. MD is the Dirac mass uh, matrix, and MR is the right-handed neutrino. And you have, therefore, a complex symmetric neutrino mass matrix. And the unitary mixing matrix is now precisely the PMNS matrix, where the mixing angles theta 1, 2, theta 2, 3, and theta 1, 3 are defined between 0 and 90 degrees, whereas the CP violating, the Dirac CP violating phase delta and the Majorana CP violating phase is alpha beta. They're all defined in terms of the 0 to 2 part. Okay, let me now open the neutrino fact file. We have the latest uh, summarized uh, neutrino mass square differences and the absolute value, uh, the actual value for 2, 1 square and the absolute value for 3, 1 squared, and the sum we take from Planck to be less than 0.23 electron volt, and these are the three sigma ranges of the mixing angle. So if you have a normal mass ordering for the light neutrinos, you have this kind of a situation. If you have an inverted one, you have that kind. Okay. Now, Lavora in 2000, which was revived again by Mahapatra and Orange one in 2007, proposed this simple scaling hypothesis, real scaling hypothesis. That tells you we have chosen a certain sign convention so that our unitary mixing matrix matches exactly with the PDG form of UP EMNS. So we need to put in some negative signs. But basically, that E mu to E tau, V mu to V tau, and tau mu to tau tau, these ratios are the same simple scaling real constant K. When you put K equals 1, you recover mu tau interchange symmetry plus the additional rela relation that mu mu element is the same negative as of mu tau. Now, this was proposed, but this has right, right away ran into a problem. The determinant of this matrix is zero, so that immediately predicts one neutrino, massless neutrino. Furthermore, uh, the uh, eigenvector turns out to be the third column, and that immediately means this. And so just by looking at the top element, you can see that theta 1, 3 is 0. And that's ruled out by the Diabe experiment now at 10 sigma level. So between k and the angles 2, 3, and uh, sine and cosine, these are the relations. And you have the result the tan of theta 2 to k. So it turns out that this result is going to survive even after we do complex extension. The unitary matrix in the simple real scaling form has this form. And once again, you see theta 1, 3 is 0, which is not accepted. However, one very interesting dynamical feature of this thing is the concept of Z2 scaling. See, for a complex symmetric neutrino matrix, mass matrix M mu, if you have a flavor symmetry G, then you have this kind of relation. 
And Lamb first pointed out in 2003, which was elaborated by Gupta, Jashipura, and Patel in 2012, that immediately you have the result. Oh, this is not good. Okay. Um, that u dagger g u is d, where d squared is 1. There are eight possibilities, and of which, sorry, um, there are eight possibilities, and uh, they split into, uh, well, two are 1 plus minus unit is a trivial, split into two sets, so we've got really one independent set, and then again, there's a relationship between g a and g b g c, so you have basically, okay. So, ultimately, you have this uh, two sets, two and three, and corresponding to G2 and G3, so there is a Z2 cross Z2 discrete residual symmetry. This was discovered by Lamb in 2003, and that's called the residual flavor symmetry of the neutrino mass matrix. Now, we identify, our job comes at this point, we identify this, uh, this residual symmetry, uh, Z2, Z2 scaling with G3 scaling, and use this form, U SRS D3, where D3 recall is this D3. Um, and so with that form, we are able to get a form for G3 scaling, which is a symmetric matrix. And now, armed with that, we can propose the idea of complex scaling. Complex scaling, the fact that if you have an invariance of the neutrino mass matrix, it could have a complex extension. In group theory, if you have an invariance and you have a representation S, T, R, S is R, but the complex extension R becomes R star. For Newton symmetry, it was first proposed by Lavora uh, and uh, I think Lavora, and uh, we uh, use the same idea for complex scaling. So this is the idea. That we have GR dagger MD, GL is MD star, GR dagger MR, GR star is MR star, where GL and GR are chosen as given, with D2 and D3. So uh, with such an idea, we are able to get the form of the, uh, uh, the G3 scaling has this form, and the most general form of the neutrino mass matrix in the complex extended scheme is, has this form. So there are six real parameters, x, y12, z12, and w. And you have this result, g3 scaling u star is u d t l w. So we have, and one can show that tan to theta to 3 is still k inverse, but sine alpha, sine beta, and cos delta have all vanished. That means the Majorana phases have to be 0 or pi, whereas the Dirac phase is pi by 2 or 3 pi which is very encouraging because there's a hint uh, from the latest experiment that the act is it's close to 3 pi by 2. Furthermore, there is automatically a common source of CP violation and non-zero theta 1, 3. Both come from the imaginary part of this complex extended form of the neutrino mass matrix. If this imaginary part is zero, the CP violation itself vanishes and theta 1, 3 also vanishes. So we have a common origin of theta 1, 3 as well as the, uh, as well as CP violation. So then we turn to GR and we find that the only form compatible with scaling symmetry is this form for GR. And so we are able to reconstruct MD in terms of these parameters A, B12, C12, and E, B12, and EF. These are related to the six parameters of the complex extended form for the neutrino mass matrix by relations given in this table. Now let's come to baryogenesis bioelectronics. For that, the first step is the calculation of the CPA symmetry parameters. You recall that the lepton doublet can be regarded in this notation as that, and the Higgs doublet as that. So the CP violating decay symmetry parameter is the, when the heavy neutrino or Majorana neutrino goes to the lepton doublet plus the Higgs doublet minus the charge conjugative divided by one. So, sorry, this should be capital M in this chart. So this is obtained from an interference between the tree diagram and the one loop diagram. And with our form of the neutrino mass, but you automatically get 
epsilon 1 e is 0 and epsilon 1 mu plus minus epsilon 1 tau not equal to 0. And they have, these are explicit forms which one can obtain in terms of the ratios of the heavy neutrinomassy mi over mg and the parameters there. So we assume, sorry, this should be capital. We assume that the right handed neutrinos follow a hierarchy and it is therefore reasonable to uh, suppose that the, that leptogenesis occurs at a temperature of ordinary M1 and M2 and M3 are much smaller. So there are three regimes for leptogenesis. One is when the, when M1 is less than 10 to the 9 GeV and one can show that all lepton flavors uh, act separately and in epsilon I alpha. But in our case, epsilon 1 is 0 and epsilon 1 mu equals minus epsilon tau. So the situation is very simple. Or you can have the temperature between 10 to the 9 GeV and 10 to the 12 GeV, M1 itself being that. And here only the tau flavor can be identified separately in E and E have to be solved. But we just, since E is 0, we just have epsilon 1 mu and epsilon 1 tau, which is equal to minus epsilon. Or you can have M1 greater than 10 to the 12 GeV. However, here, the problem is, sorry. Yeah. Here, the, uh, uh, all flavors act indistinguishably. So we just have epsilon 1 e plus epsilon 1 mu plus epsilon 1 tau. But this vanishes in our model. So you can't have lep leptogenesis if you have M1. So you are restricted only to the first two regimes. Now, we work out the Boltzmann equations. I will not go into the details of the Boltzmann equations here. And we look at the yield y lambda, which is ml lambda minus ml bar lambda over the entropy density s. And that's really the photon density over the entropy density times eta l lambda, where that's the amount of the yield of the empty lepton flavor. And then for the active lepton flavor lambda, we can work it out. And we consider the evolution with temperature by Boltzmann equation from the temperature of the order of M1 to electric temperature and consider this phaleronic conversion of the lepton asymmetry into a baryon asymmetry. Keeping, keeping this uh, one third B minus L lambda lambda being the flavor conserved. And our finding is that a realistic baryon asymmetry parameter. Yb is Nb minus Nb bar over S. And it can be generated at the level 8.7 plus minus 0.1 times 10 to the 11 only for the second regime where T is between 10 to the 9 and 10 to the 12 of the order of M1 and not for the first regime where M1 is less than 10 to the 9. So uh, this baryogenesis via leptogenesis for this model works only for the intermediate regime where M1 is between 10 to the 9. Let me now turn to a phenomenological discussion. We have considered a numerical run with a six parameter complex extended neutrino mass matrix and use the three sigma ranges for all these values and the parameters for normal mass ordering of the light neutrinos are found to be these ranges where the neutrino masses are then found to be the electron volts in these ranges, whereas for an inverted mass ordering that's also allowed and they are found to be these ranges. So you see, whereas it's with simple real scaling, only inverted mass ordering was allowed and theta 1, 3 was 0 and one of the neutrino masses was 0. With a complex extended uh, scaling hypothesis, you have realistic neutrino masses possible and both normal and inverted ordering are allowed. In consistent with the three sigma ranges of the neutrino oscillation data. Now, if you consider the uh, allowed ranges of the neutrino mass parameters, then you see for normal ordering, M1 is the lightest, and this is the M1 45 degree line, M2 and M3, the allowed regions are these. Whereas for inverted mass ordering, M3 is the lightest, is the 45 degree line, and the here is here are M2 and M1. So now we apply this to neutrino-less double beta decay. When you apply this to neutrino-less double beta decay, you find that uh, modulus of the amplitude 
for neutrinos that were double bedded. So these are the regions which are going to be experimentally probed. GERDA phase one is already probing this region, and GERDA phase two hopes to probe these this region. So you see, there are four cases for D tilde, and for two of these cases, it's pretty hopeless. There's no way that the experiment is going to see neutrinos as double bedded. Whereas for these two cases, there is some hope. At the very end of the uh, masses, mass allowed, mass values, you could uh, gird up phase two by just be able to reach uh, neutral as double beta decay and see a signal. So in general, our message for neutral as double beta decay is specific. Namely, in this class of models, you are unlikely to see neutral as double beta decay. So here are my conclusions. Uh, we have proposed a complex extension of the scaling hypothesis on the basis of this result, uh, G3, M nu G3 is M nu star. Now recall that what Lavora and Mahapatra and Rajivan had was G3 M nu G3 is M nu. The complex extension is putting a star there. And this allows a six parameter, six real parameter form of M nu, which is this. The consequences are the Majorana phases are zero or pi. In other words, there is no Majorana CP violation. The Dirac phase is pi by two or three pi by two. Or in other words, there's maximal Dirac CP violation. Each neutrino mass can be non-zero and they can be generated from a type one seesaw mechanism. Either mass ordering for the light neutrinos, normal or inverted is possible. Most of the parameter space yields hierarchical neutrinos, but only at the very end when the sum approaches the cosmological upper bound of 0.23 electron volt can you get quasi degenerate neutrinos. But only for quasi degenerate neutrinos, in the case of inverted light neutrino mass ordering, can you have any hope of seeing neutrino less double beta decay? Interesting predictions for neutrino less double beta decay. And realistic baryogenesis, bioleptogenesis is possible only in the intermediate regime where M1 is between 10 to the 9 and 10 to the 12 G. A normal light neutrino mass. I forgot to mention that we inverted light neutrino mass ordering, then realistic baryogenesis is bioleptogenesis. No, it just followed from the complex extension of the residual flavor symmetry hypothesis. Once you assume you take the same. Thing that Mahapatra, Rada Johan, and Lavora had done, but except M nu, you put M nu star in the right hand side. That requirement only by itself will give you everything. That's fine with me. Thank you. Yes, there is a, the, uh, this is the uh, global analysis, right? Global analysis, but you know, global analysis, analysis are good and we like them, but they are not completely clinching. You really want to. Uh, know what the ordering is doing. 